All right, so in last week's challenge, or this week's challenge, I suppose, we decided to essentially look at management resource. Now, how do we do this and why do we do this? Well, the first thing we're going to take a look at is, well, if I want to define a bunch of things, let's say wood and make this equal to zero by default, and then we have stone and then we have blah, 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 a bunch of things. Well, this can be kind of disorganized in a sense, and it's kind of hard to check if we have something that exists all in one. Now, what we'll do is we'll instead create a dictionary. Now, this is a dictionary, and we can even define it by putting brackets here and say dictionary. Or sorry, not brackets, but colon. Uh, and then if you want, you can actually hold control and left click the dictionary and find the documentation. And it, this is very useful. There are a lot of examples, but we'll take a look at some of these uh, in this video today. The next part we can look at and we'll kind of explain what the point of this is in just a second, is through another function. This other function we can use and call add resource passing through a type, which is going to be a string like this, like wood, and then an amount using an amount like 10, 100, whatever. Now, the first thing we'll do inside of this function is check to see if the dictionary resources has the type. Now, this is a built-in function dot has. You can find it in the documentation. And this function essentially checks to see, well, if we have this type. Now, what we can do here is if we do have it, we can get the resources with the brackets, just like an array, and pass through the type, the string. This will allow us to actually access it and add to the amount. Now, we can also add an else statement here. And this else statement will simply print something, uh, printing, hey, you know, this resource, this type, is not recognized inside of our dictionary or inside of our script here. Now, to test this, what we can do is we can add a ready function and simply add resource. We can call the add resource function and we can say wood with, let's say, a thousand. Now, what we can do here is we can then print the resource dictionary after just so we know that we actually added it. Now let's hit play. And we will see here that this was from a previous uh, thing. So let me just remove that. All right, so now we can see that nothing happened. Now, the reason is because we don't have game. The script game is not attached to anything. So one option, and this is what I would suggest, is to make it global. We can do this by going to project settings, go to globals, go to the scripts. We'll find that script, add it right here like so. And now you can see we have that script global. We can hit play one more time. And now you'll see our wood is equal to a thousand. We can even go to the remote section and see the game. And we can even go to the dictionary of the resources and see wood is at a thousand. Now this is very useful and very cool because inside of our world script, let's say, we can add another function here. And we can say game, the capital G dot add resource, let's say stone with a thousand or a hundred, let's say. We'll hit play and we'll now see that over here we have wood 1000, but stone is zero. Now, why is that? Well, that's because this script went before, or sorry, it went after the game.gd. Now, the reason is because of the format of this, right? Game happens before the world, but we can still see inside of the game, inside of the dictionary, that stone is 100. All right, so this is how we can manage resources inside of a game, inside of an RTS, or whatever. So hopefully this helped, and hopefully I'll see you all next week for next week's challenge.